What is up? Prepping for a shoot right now, so I got a bunch of stuff back here, but it looks good though. Just saw that the new Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K Pro, the Pocket 6K Pro was just announced, so I'm like, all right, all right, all right, fine, fine. Everybody hitting me up on Twitter and my DMs and stuff, being like, Cody, we want you to talk about it and tell us what you think. Like, I'm like okay, I got you guys, it's fine. I like, I can make some time for it, whatever. My computer is acting up again. Guys, forgive me about the fan sound in the background, okay? Can you forgive me? I'm pumped, all right? I wanted to get this video going right now. So, I pulled up the page from Blackmagic, taking a quick look. This thing looks annoyingly awesome because now I wanna sell my pocket and get one. So let's just take a look quickly down some of these specs that make me wanna buy it. And maybe why you would wanna buy it too. Some things to think about. So they got the 4K, they got the 6K, this one that I just got, and they now have the 6K Pro, like I said. That's annoying. It looks like it has the same sensor than as the 6K original. The 6K Pro includes additional Pro features such as two, four, and six stops of ND filters. Internal ND filters adjustable. This is what everybody wants in a cinema camera. So like that literally right there is probably why I'm gonna buy it. Cause think about it, a two stop, a four stop, a six stop ND, that's at least $300 if you're getting pretty good quality ND filters, but that can go up way higher if you're getting like really high quality filters. I don't know the quality of the filters they're putting in these cameras, but I would imagine they're pretty high. That is a no brainer getting those ND filters built in. It's so like quick to switch between them too. Also has a 1500 nit monitor that's ideal for sunlight. Adjustable tilt, why did I skip over that? Adjustable tilt HDR LCD, let's go. That's what we wanted. Also includes two XLR audio inputs, which is sick. Just having one is amazing, but having two now. I know some people would rather just have one big XLR, but I, I would love to have two. And then a larger MPF 570 battery, you get more out of the camera. That, just that paragraph right there, the, the money is just leaving my wallet. All right, 6K Pro, okay, it's got the same, same sensor, at least the same size sensor. It probably has the same exact sensor in there. 120 FPS windowed. I would like to see, I'd like to see more slow-mo options. So one thing they didn't mention in that paragraph is this little thing right here. You see this? They have a little viewfinder now, which I love on a Sony. And in bright sunlight, when you can't see the screen or you'd rather have the view, that's what I'm talking about, Blackmagic. Let's go. It is still EF mount, which I know people aren't super happy with the, P the EF as far as adaptability. But if you have a lot of EF glass already, you're okay. And I mean, EF is super popular. So they're always making, like coming out with new stuff for EF. It's tried and true. The built-in and D filters, let's go. Clear, two stops, four stops, six stops. I'm telling you. I shot with the FS7 for a long time and that feature was just one of the main features that I love. <laughs> My wife texted me, why are you yelling though? Cause I'm excited. No. Black Magic just came out with the 6K Pro and I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> I'm telling the people why it's a big deal. Built-in ND filters, it has an adjustable tilting screen. It has a viewfinder now. You have a baby sleeping. I didn't know. <laughs> Get it together. Sorry, bye. <laughs> All right. We can't yell anymore, guys, but still. All right, what does it say? High quality motorized IR and D filters, eliminating IR contamination. Let's go, now we have an IR cut built into the NDs. Let's see if it's any good. Activation buttons are located on the rear. That's so sick. Of course, we have high dynamic range. I think we have 13 stops here. Visual Studios comes with the camera, of course. Dual gain ISO for exceptional low light performance. Still have 50 FPS and 6K. I, I, I wanted a little bit more. What's up with the Pro, anything else? exciting with the slow-mo capabilities. You can even work in true anamorphic six to five using it over 3.7K. Yeah, but there's not that many EF anamorphics. That's one thing I wish they had uh, jumped up or maybe they made the 120 FPS a little bit better. So I'm doing a project right now where I need high quality slow-mo. So I need 120p at least, but the 6K is 120, it's just, it's not great. It's in 2.8K, which is which I like, but it crops in, which a lot of cameras do that, I know, but it doesn't, it doesn't hold up that well in my opinion, especially when you put it up against the 6K footage in like an edit. So I actually have the EOS R and the GH5S that I'm testing out to see which one of those can do the best slow-mo and I'm use that on this project. But I'd like to have, obviously, have everything all in one camera that I need to do, you know what I mean? 10-bit Apple ProRes files, which is dope. 12-bit Blackmagic RAW. Wait, up to 6K? Wait, this is saying something here. All formats, recording works in industry standard template of a ProRes in all formats up to 4K, or 12-bit Blackmagic RAW in all formats up to 6K. 
What do they mean by all formats? Can you finally do 4K RAW on the 6K? They didn't make that clear, so I don't think that they can. I think they would have made that pretty clear. Cinema camera features built-in CFast and SD, which is it, and USB for recording to an external disc. You gotta love it. All right, Blackmagic RAW is a revo new revolution, revolutionary new format. Revo 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 Most people know Blackmagic RAW is amazing, and the pullback you get, and the color quality and everything is really, really good. So just to show you, you can destroy an image if you want to. What is this even supposed to tell me? Oh, just that you can change your ISO. You can change your ISO, but it's, you're still recording at the native ISOs, so you don't really want to change your ISO in post. <laughs> Maybe. There's a debate. There's always a debate about that, but I wouldn't. Ooh, you can make it black and white, or you can absolutely destroy your image. I don't, I don't really know what that section was about. Okay, the touchscreen is really nice to have. I really wish that there were more like hand controls, like up, down, left, right would be nice to have. I'm actually playing, gonna play around with a, a setup where I have my phone as part of my rig, so I can actually control the settings from the phone without having to like, look back at the screen. Um, but touchscreen, the touchscreen works really nice on these cameras, I will, I will definitely say. Okay, then we got advanced OS features from the Ursa Mini Pro. Oh really? What's different about this one? Doesn't say. Latest Gen 5 color signs. Ooh, that's really cool. So now the Pocket 6K Pro can do the Gen 5 color signs in camera, not just the DaVinci change. Does it, does it come with all those op the options for the viewfinders? Cause that's pretty cool. A few critical status information, such as frame guides, Pocket Center Pro VF connects quickly to Pocket 6K Pro via a single connector. Oh, so you can take it off. That's cool. 70 degrees swivel range, four different types of eye cups. It comes with four different types of eye. That's cool that it comes with those four eye cups, like with the camera. That's awesome. Professional connections for custom rigs. This is what I was talking about earlier. So you have your microphone input, you have your headphone jack out, you have your full size HDMI, which is very handy to have. USB C connection, which you can record to an external hard drive. You can, uh, I read earlier, you can now charge using the USB expansion port. Um, you have your 12 volt power, the little two pin power cable, which is handy. It's usually what I use to detap too many XLR inputs, which I know could come in very handy. And they both provide phantom power. Maybe yeah, so they just talked about four built-in microphones. Four, wait, four built-in microphones? That's definitely new, that there's four built-in microphones. That's pretty cool. Professional high fidelity audio recording. You'll never have to carry around a separate audio recorder again. 6K Pro has two XLR connections, two separate audio tracks using two mics, two audio tracks. Without an external mixer, four built-in mics of extremely low noise floor. I've actually been pretty happy with the quality just straight out of the camera as far as audio goes. Okay, this is interesting. Built-in timecode generator. Professional cameras include professional features, and you also get a built-in timecode generator, allowing shooting with more than one camera while keeping perfect sync. Simply plug an external timecode generator such as Tentacle Sync into the three, and it'll automatically detect timecode and lock the internal generator. Wait, what? Okay, so if you get something like this tentacle sync and you, you plug it in all your Pocket 6K Pros that are shooting, DaVinci Resolve will automatically find and sync the shots so you don't have to do it. That's, I love that companies like this are trying hard to actually like help out the people who are shooting and not just make money, you know? Like that's so helpful. Shoot up to 21 megapixel stills. That's dope, nobody cares about that. 11 languages, thank you. Wireless Bluetooth camera control. Now that's really great. So you can power from batteries, 12 volt, and now you can recharge via USB-C, which is really nice. 4K and 6K use removable LP6. 6K Pro uses larger MPF 570s. So having the MPF 570 battery instead of the LP6 is, is really nice. Recharging via USB-C is really nice. I wonder if you can recharge while you're shooting. That would probably cause problems. But anyway, that's really nice to have because that's a bigger battery, longer life. You can get Anton Bauer batteries that are the MPF 570 batteries. And of course you can run two pin to detap, two pin to 12 volt power, whatever you want to do. You can use the pocket cinema camera as a live studio camera. Who cares about that? Includes, I know some of you probably care, but I don't. Includes DaVinci Resolve Studio, of course, which is pretty amazing now. I used to hate it, now I'm on board. Good job making it better, DaVinci. We have a highly composited shot here <laughs> with somebody pretending to use, oh, introducing A10 Mini. This is a whole new product now, I don't care about that. Sorry if you care about live stream stuff, I don't care. Oh, wait, what? I didn't know that the EVF didn't come with the camera, so now it's three grand if you want that. That sucks. <laughs> oh, I wanted that. I thought it came with it. I guess it makes sense for the price. I was a little confused, but like, oh, it'd be so nice if it came with it. Oh, well. But still for the 
the NDs and the tilt screen, I'm probably gonna get it. It's definitely worth the extra 500. I mean, it's worth the extra thousand, but I probably won't get the EVF at first. I'm gonna get the just base as the body and see how it see how it operates. And if I need it, I'll buy it later on. Yes, this camera looks amazing. ND filters, tilting screen, extra audio ports, time code out, recharge through USB-C, bigger battery life, more microphones. Actually, I don't care about that. EVF option, Gen 5 color science, like of reasons to upgrade. A lot of times these cameras will come out and you're like, you don't really need to upgrade to the next version of it, you know? But for this one, I'm personally gonna do whatever I can to upgrade to this camera. We'll see, I mean, I'll sleep on it a little bit. I'll think, try to think a little more clearly when it's not the release and the excitement, you know? Cause my 6K is great, but there are some things. I mean, as you can see right here, oh, I'm just testing out these rigs, so don't judge me, but you have to have an external monitor and you have to loosen this every time and reposition it to get a, you know, the shot you want. And sometimes you just want to tilt up and down, you know? And then I usually have to have an ND filter on the end of my lens that I have to turn the ring, but that's a variable ND, which is still expensive. It's not the best quality when you have the variable NDs. So there's some of the things I already don't like about the pocket and those are fixed. So if it had better slow motion, it would be a no brainer. I would have already listed this thing up to sell, but. Guys, I gotta get back to work, real work, not looking at cameras all day that I wanna buy, cause that's a rabbit hole. So I will see you guys later. Let me know what you think about this new camera. If you don't have a 6K, buy the 6K Pro, absolutely. If you already have the 6K, and the features that I listed that are important to me are also important to you. 6K Pro is only $500 more, so if you wanna do the whole sell your camera upgrade thing, really depends on what you're doing, it might be worth it. For me, it's worth it, because you're saving money in ND filters, and if you don't have an external, like I don't have a great external monitor, the one that I have right now, it's like 100 something bucks or something, it's not the best, so to have a tilt screen, and you can probably get away without having a monitor in most situations. So if you take all that into consideration, it might be worth it selling and upgrading to the Pocket 6K Pro, as I might do. So yeah, awesome to see companies like this coming out, trying to help the little guy make some cool stuff, you know? Most of us don't have budgets for Reds and the Lexus, so we take our pockets and we do what we can, you know what I'm saying? So take the money out of my pocket, Black Magic. You're welcome. See y'all in the next one. Peace out.